Are you prepared for a power outage? Are you prepared for a disaster before it happens? We've done a couple of live streams lately about getting prepared for winter, preparing for power outages. This is a story of being prepared first and seeing direct results of what happened, but there are a few things that they could have done differently. So let's check this out real quick. This story about preparedness and about radio to the rescue comes from Down Under. So I'd be interested to see uh, what Hayden may or may not have to say about uh, this group and about this story. So from midlandexpress.com.au is uh, Australian. And I didn't realize it was in Australia until I read about uh, two thirds of the way through the article, but that's what we're going to get to here in a minute. Castle, Maine, amateur radio enthusiast Tony Fallow is encouraging community members to consider having a radio on hand to assist in times of emergency when all other forms of communication fail. So we're going to talk about that. He makes some very good points here that I very much agree with, and I'd like to know what you guys think of the comments. So stay tuned to the end and then comment on the video if you don't mind. Tony has been a uh, amateur radio enthusiast for more than 50 years and established a local Facebook group called Mount Alexander Radio Watch. Now that's linked right here. Mount Alexander Radio Watch is only 54 members. There's not as many hams in Australia as there are in the United States, but that's okay. That's okay. So that I don't know how wide reaching Mount Alexander is, but that's a link to the Facebook page. So I'll, I'll put that link in the description below as well. He did this Facebook group to encourage people to set up their own radio network for use in times of power cuts, mobile outages, and other unpredictable situations. But his skills and equipment were recently put to the test when simultaneous power and Optus network outages plunged homes across his region into darkness and saw many unable to communicate via phone. So the Optus network, I have to go look that up. I'm not sure what that is. The Optus network is their cell phone provider. They're talking about 3G, 4G, and 5G connections in Australia. So Optus is basically their AT&T or Verizon or whoever like that. So it might be a part of T-Mobile. I know T-Mobile is a worldwide reaching effort. Perhaps it is. I, I'm not sure, but it is the cell phone network. So he's talking about the cell phone network there. That's what the important part of the story is. The storm event on January 2nd, so just a couple of weeks ago at the time of this recording, saw 24,000 homes across the central and west Western regions without power after 90,000 lightning strikes across the state damaged infrastructure. 90,000 lightning strikes. Wow. Holy cow. Okay, then. Well, there you go. Yeah, that's going to be a thing. Despite having to look for an alternative source of lighting, which why are you looking for an alternative source of lighting? That's always have a flashlight in your emergency kit. I was able to use my car radio transmitter to set up and reach out to Mount Alexander Radio Watch members across the region and gauge how widespread this issue was and everyone was okay, he says right here in this paragraph. So so my question is, why are you using your radio transmitter? Why aren't you using your home base station? I mean, the, the, it, it, shows a, it shows a picture of him operating from what looks like a ham shack. So why is he using his car transmitter? He said he didn't have any power, and I'm like, okay, but it says in the in the in the caption of the photo up up at the top, it says that he has uh, backed up by a battery, his home radio transmitter, which is backed up by a battery in the event of a power outage. So why was he not using that? The article does not detail that. So I would like to know. I would like to know why he's using his car. And uh, and again, despite having to look for an alternate alternative source of lighting, always have a uh, a flashlight in your in your go kit, in your outage bag. After confirming everyone was okay, one of my colleagues offered to drop me off some spare car batteries to extend my light's duration. However, they weren't required in the end, as unfortunately the outage only lasted a couple of hours. Good. Okay. Tony said Mount Alexander Radio Watch was not a rescue or monitoring service. What we do is help local communities to equip, train, or organize themselves to be able to contact emergency services or family and friends under their own efforts. I like that. I like the way that's worded. Contact family and friends under their own efforts. In other words, someone doesn't have to contact you. You can reach out and contact other people if you are the one that's without power and without uh, connection, without internet. Point-to-point -point radio enables an open mesh network to form. I never thought about it in those terms, but that's true. I mean, if you've got Let's say you take uh, some radio operators in your area and you all have a home station with a vertical antenna up as high as you can get, it, hopefully, and you're all talking on VHF FM simplex, okay, which we have, we have a group of people who do that here in North Texas. If I can hear the station over there and I can hear the station over there, but the station several miles that way can't hear me, I can talk to the station closest to me and he can relay. A lot of times during a ham radio net, you will hear the term relay. And relay just means ba basically there's a net control located in one station somewhere that maybe not everyone can hear. Even if you're on HF, this happens on HF as well, 
also. And relay stations will assist net control from other parts of the state or other parts of the country, and they will relay back to net control stations that are trying to contact net control but are unable to reach net control. So this forms a sort of mesh network of radio operators where maybe the centralized net control wherever he's located can't hear everybody on the outskirts but the relay stations between net control and the the outer stations that can't be heard the relay stations in between those two stations can relay back messages and send traffic back and forth this is a great way to set up like i said a simplex station or an hf type station calling cq for a for a, a hurricane outage type net something like that so this is a great way to set up something like that so the term uh open mesh network is applicable, I think. It's it's not again. It's not a term I've heard to uh, to refer to to radio relay stations before. But that is a good term. Moving forward on this, I'd like to tell you about Mezzi and Poloni coax. If you do have a home base station set up, I highly recommend Mezzi and Poloni coax mmp coax made in italy they are the sponsors of this video you can save a 10 percent discount off of all mmp products their coax their connectors these neat little scissors they've got right here you can save a 10 percent discount on all mmp products at the link in the description below with the coupon code of hr2 cables so thank you to mezzi and Poloni for supporting this video once again point to point radio enables an open mesh network to form this means that participants can hear each other and are able to talk to everybody it's an efficient way of solving problems or calling for help repeaters on Mount Alexander, Mount Macedon, and other key locations mean local enthusiasts can speak across Victoria and beyond. So, repeater, hey, if your repeater's up and on backup power, it's certainly a viable form of communication. This applies to GMRS repeaters as well. With the right equipment conditions, you can speak with amateur radio enthusiasts across the globe. I've connected with people on every continent. Yes, agreed. So have I. You can start with a handheld radio for as low as $150, or a citizen's band radio for as low as $170, or you can go through to more advanced amateur radio systems, which are more flexible but require a license. I wonder what handheld radio he's looking at for $150, and I wonder if you can't buy a $28, a $25 to $30 Valfang on Amazon and get it shipped to Australia. I know there is an Amazon Australia website, amazon.com.au, I think it is. I know Amazon Australia is a thing, so I wonder why he's... Maybe he just doesn't like the lower-end radios, I don't know, but I'm pretty sure you can get a handheld radio for less than $150 even in Australia. If you guys have information that contradicts what I just said, please put a comment below. Tony said many people across Australia have already been assisted by either having a radio with them or being helped by people who were equipped with radios. If in trouble, I would, of course, always use the phone first. Radios are a last resort. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. If your cell phone is working, pick it up and dial 911 at least in the USA. However, my experience the other day in Castlemaine show preparedness is vital. Bingo. Prepare now when you don't need it so that you will have it when you do need it. Calling triple zero is not always possible. I don't know what that is. Maybe that's uh, Australian 911. As it wasn't for 228 people across Australia whose number wasn't transferred to another network from Optus during a 14-hour outage in November. We don't hear what happened to any of those people who tried to call for help but i'll bet some suffered as a result so they don't they don't know the results of that because the phone company's not going to tell them oh yeah we let a bunch of people down by not providing cell signal when we should have <laughs> in the recent floods i also read a couple was trapped on a car roof and some others stuck in a tree for 11 hours wow if they had had a handheld radio on their belt they would have been able to call for assistance much sooner you can learn more about the benefits of uh, bendigo amateur radio and electronics club coffee mornings held at castle main community house on the last sunday of each month at 10 a.m visit their website right here and i'll link this in the description below and again this is their facebook page right here where you can go check that out if you're in australia if you're in that area it's a good resource to have to to be a part of so do you guys have something like this in your area do you have something sort of like a he calls this the mount alexander shire radio watch facebook group so i wonder if we should start a radio watch facebook group for your area do you have one in your area i would like to know if you have a radio watch facebook group or some other kind of group maybe an email list maybe a text messaging list do you have some sort of community-led watch group specifically for radio in your area yesterday i'm gonna date myself recording this video now yesterday it was 10 degrees in the morning in north texas when i woke up and i stayed home all day i didn't go anywhere it didn't get above like 25 24 25 degrees all day and today it's back down it was back down to like 13 last night it's in the low 20s right now as i'm recording this my feet are cold <laughs> But one of our local, in fact, a few of our local repeaters, they get on when stuff like this happens. They'll get on the repeater in about once an hour. 
they'll just check in. Very informal net, very informal this, this, and the other. Guys just keen up saying, hey, KC5 HWB monitoring the repeater. And I would say that, and someone else would throw out their own call sign. So there's a, a very informal thing that happens in this area, but what do you have in your area? And what do you think we should do to expand that? before because it's just cold out here right now there are some homes around this area that have lost power mine is not one of them thankfully but uh, no, none of my neighbors have lost power either but if we did lose power would you be prepared with flashlights backup batteries radio communications equipment what do you think we could do to prepare right now for that put a comment below thanks for watching